praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good day. Good night. Uh, good morning. Good night. Good night. Buenos noches. Uh, Buenos dias. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Jen Dobre. <laughs> good morning. Y'all, yesterday when I got off from work, as I was coming into my, my home, I saw my 82 year old neighbor, Mrs. Miller, she's, well, she's widow now, um, struggling to let her little dog out her front door to use the bathroom. So it was, it was hot, it was like 95 degrees, uh, and I, so I hollered across the way, uh, Miss Miller, I'll, uh, I'll walk her, I'll walk her. The dog's name is Teeny. It's a Shih Tzu mixed with a poodle. Beautiful little dog, I think she's 14, 15, 16 years old. So I ran in the house, um, put on my older disabled veteran's hat, because I know I was going to sweat. Ran across the yard, grabbed a dog, leaned in the door and gave Mrs. Miller uh, a hug. And I said, I'm going to walk her, and as soon as she poop, I'm going to bring her right back. Now, if you ever had a dog, you know when your dog going to go. You know the areas that he or she has marked. You know your dog's pattern and habits and routine and routes. But I don't know nothing about this little dog. So she played like she's gonna stop, but she kept she kept wagging <laughs> and going. I know the little dog, you know. I've been living next to her for 12 years. Um, she comes to a little electrical uh, box. That's her spot, she throws her leg. Oh, excuse me, she swats. She sits down. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So we stop, proceed to walk. And this Caucasian lady, ears are ringing, oof, um, jumps out of her car. I'm thinking she's rushing to get in the house. She starts screaming and cussing at me. What the, what's wrong with you walking that MF and dog out here in this heat? I'm like, excuse me, you talking to me, ma'am? I'm talking to you, mf -er. I said, well, first of all, this is not my dog. Second of all, you're not going to talk to me like that. I can talk to your black ass any kind of way <laughs> Yeah, man, if I want to. Man, seven alarm fire. I got so heated and hot. The little dog sitting there and so I couldn't get her like I want to get her. So she heard him going to the house. I hollered something back at her. You don't know who I am and don't talk to me like that, you know. And so she ran in the house. So walk a little further. Teeny goes. I turn around and come back. Mind you now, I've been living in this neighborhood 12 years. And I think these people just recently moved into this house. I don't even recognize the lady. She was an older Caucasian lady, maybe in her mid to late 60s. I don't know, because it happened so fast. But my temperature shot up so fast, I had to catch myself. It's like slamming on brakes. I, I slammed on brakes so hard that I think I hurt my brain because she hurt my feelings. You know, I was going to start this video off by using this definitive, or excuse me, this, uh, uh, urban legend definition or, 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 or name people are calling people in society, Caucasian women who act this way, they call them Karens. But any of us can be a Karen, a Ken, you know, acting a fool or being a fool, being racist, being bigoted, um, does not discriminate, nor is it uh, discriminatory. So as I leave this alone, I'm headed to the doctor. I toss and turn because I have white coat syndrome, it's real. Um, I got to meet with a uh, medical doctor about the hernia that I have, and I got to see my oncologist and uh, hematologist and the AEIOU, and sometimes, why? <laughs> but it, it bothered me, it perturbed me, it disturbed me, y'all. Y'all pray for me. I got to drive out to, um, to Amherst. It's about a 58-mile drive from my house. I'm on the road. On the road again. Can't wait to get on. <laughs> The road again. Uh, I just can't wait to get on the road again. <laughs> That's my version. That's how I leave this long. So, that lady, mm, I don't know what's going on in her life. To Maybe she's a pet lover. Maybe she's a, um, uh, on the board of PETA. But people get um, hurt. Uh, I'm for, I grew up in the projects, killed. I grew up in the hood, the inner city. People get uh, messed up, caught up, 
people double back and come get you when you disrespect them and saying the, the slightest thing. But the way she talked to me, y'all, and I was raised uh, in the inner city in low-income housing, but I had two poor righteous teachers, my mom and my dad. And so I'm grateful for William Isaiah Davis and Marie McCauley Davis because it was a whole lot. If she had stopped, whoo, man, the verbal assault that I had on my mind. I don't stay locked and loaded, but to attack someone, you know, you, you know, I'm a federal employee, but that don't matter. I'm a disabled vet, but that don't matter. Uh, uh, I have cancer, but that don't matter. I have migraine, uh, uh, CMD and CMS, chronic migraine syndrome and chronic migraine disease, but that don't matter. Uh, I'm college educated, but that don't matter. I have a high school diploma, but that don't matter. You know, I, I'm a veteran of the United States Army, hmm. 10 years, but that don't matter until I get hurt as I leave this alone. But you don't know what a person, you know, who a person is or who they belong to. <clears throat> my grandfather, hallelujah. And my dad's and uncle used to pull up tree stumps and they would pull up a tree stump and you see some way across the field move. They'll pull up a root, you see, you see something way across the field move. So y'all better be uh, careful. You don't know who people are tired or connected to. You don't know people's roots, you know, roots run deep and long across the field. So lady, sister, woman, uh, I don't know who you are. I don't know whose you are, but you might have gave yourself away as far as whose you are. And I'm, and, I'm, and I'm praying and trying not to judge y'all. But the way she talked to me, man, I took it like a champ. I didn't expect it. I feel like it was unwarranted. It was uncalled for. I was just trying to do uh, Mrs. Miller a favor. Her children don't check on her. They don't come over. Only time the sons come over is when they into with their wives or need some money or been put out. I didn't know she had a daughter until about a year or so ago when she brought it up. So her daughter lived eight miles away and don't come see her. And that broke my heart. And I said, Miss Miller, I'll, I'm your son. You know, I, I had another neighbor as I lead us along. Mother Betty, she died in my arms, November 10th, 2019. Yep, of a massive heart attack on my front porch, bled out in my arms. And I might repost that video. So if, you, if your mom and dad are elderly, I live around a bunch of elderly Caucasian people, you know, and, and some young folks. But the neighborhood is old, the houses are old, and the city is old. But I'm blessed to be a son to somebody else's mother as I leave this alone. So I pray somebody will be a son to my mother. I'm not around. My mom's deceased. But I pray that I will be a son to somebody else's mother as I leave this alone. Bless y'all and keep y'all. Be kind on purpose. Peace and one.